Hello, my name is Christopher Martinsson and I work as Field Application Engineer at Knowhow Solution. In this video I'm going to show you how to debug Linux user space application and libraries using Trace32. So let's switch to Trace32 and as you can see I also have a console open. So this is a, the normal Linux console where I can issue a Linux command. I already prepared a script that I have executed to set up my system. So the script I've been using is very similar to the one that I created in my, one of my earlier videos called how to set up debugging of li the Linux kernel. So in that script you have more or less everything you need to also debug the Linux applications. So in this video I'm going to show you how to debug the app. Uh, the processes, threads, but also libraries. So first let's open some window that might be useful during Linux debugging. It's of course useful to see all the processes that I have in my system, but also the symbol outloader might be useful to have, so let's open the symbol outloader. The symbol outloader will be used to load the symbols for the different process and so on. So now switch to the console and start a few new process. As you can see now when I halt the execution you will see that my list with process now contains two new use space processes and the symbol outloader window will also show these two new processes. To, there are several ways to load the symbols for these processes. One way is to right click on it and select load symbols or you can just right click and select touch to use the outloader to load the symbols. Since in my case the uh, the, the symbol file was already available in the path, so it was find it automatically. I'm also opening here a window that shows all the symbols files that I have loaded. As you can see right now, I've loaded the symbols for the VM Linux, the kernel, and also the process proffer, and now also the bit processes. You can load as many, as many symbol files as you like. One important thing when it comes to Linux use space debugging is that all the processes will execute on the same virtual addresses. As you can see here, uh, the processes are on address 8438 and the other one is 8508. So they are more or less on the same place. So one address, one virtual address could be point to some function in one process but could point to another function in another process. To be able to handle this, Lauterbach has introduced something called space IDs, as you can see here. And these actually correlates to the PID. You can see that here in the process list window. Here you see both space ID and the PID. For process, the, the, they are normally the same. And the space ID is enabled by using the MMU spaces option. And if you have watched my previous video, you will see that uh, we enable that in our script. So that's, that's fine. Okay, so let's set some breakpoints in, in my two different processes. First of all, I set one in the proffer process and not one in the bit process. And I will also open my break list window so that I see the breakpoints that I have in my system. As you can see there are two different breakpoints in two different processes. So let's start the execution and as you can see I did hit my first process and my first breakpoint, it's in the proffer, and as you can see up here, it says that the proffer process is current. It's the zero means that it's running on core zero, 
I see the same thing down the status bar. And run again, and you can see now, now the bit process is and also running on core zero. So this is working just fine. But as I mentioned, there is, since all processes are executing on the same addresses, there is a problem. Could, and that is if you are using on chip breakpoints. I will show this now with this example. So I will change one of these pro breakpoints to an on chip breakpoint. Like that. Now, the breakpoint will only be on the virtual address. The space ID is not involved. And as you can see right now, the, the execution stopped on the breakpoint, but we are not standing where we would expect. Actually, we are in the bit process. But as you can see, the virtual address in the bit process is exactly the same. So this breakpoint will halt on any process that execute this address. So, but there is a way to solve this. And that is by using task specific breakpoints. You can right click on it and change it. And then under advanced, you can select for which process this breakpoint should be valid. So this should only be for the proper process. And as you can see now, we did stop in the proper process. And if I hit again, with the other breakpoint and then again with the proffer. So now it's working as intended. So this is a problem with on-chip breakpoints, which are always used when you use date, read and write breakpoints. Then you need to think about this. So next thing I would like to illustrate is how to debug threads. So I'm starting a new application that is actually a multi-threaded application. As you can see now in the process list window, I have a thread know-how. If I expand it, you can see that there are four threads in this process. And when it comes to the symbols, you'll only have to load them once. That's for the process because all the threads share the same memory space. So let's set a breakpoint now in, in one of the functions in this thread. I set it in a message function. So now we have a breakpoint and it will hit on every thread. So as you can see, every time I hit go, will, it will stop on, with a different thread. And again, the, the number, the one or zero, corresponds to which core it's executing on since I have a dual core system. If Again, if you would like to set a task-specific breakpoint, you can do that by just specifying, in this case, the thread that you want to hide it on. So now it will only stop on this thread that I did specify. specify. The thread with, with PID752. Okay, the last thing I would like to show you is how to debug a library. And when doing that, I will also show you how to debug a process from main. Because if you would like to debug a process from main, there are a few things you need to prepare. If you go up in the Linux menu, yeah, here we have the Linux menu, and you can use this process debugging and debug process and then you specify the process that you would like to debug. What happens now is that it sets the breakpoints in the kernel and waits until this process is loaded. So when I start this application, as you can see things will happen in the background. It will load the symbols and it will run to the entry point or to the main function of this process. But what I wanted to show with the using this process is to how you can debug a library. Because this application is using a library called libad. You can right click on it, the process and under code files, 
you will see all the libraries it's using. So for example, it's using the libadd.so. You can add this to the symbol autoloader by right, and then you can just load a symbol as the same way you did to load the symbols for the, the use space process. So now we have loaded the symbols for the libad library and you can open it and set a breakpoint in it. And if we hit go, we will hit the breakpoint. So debugging the library is not harder than that. But be aware of that when it comes to library, they are shared between all the processes. So it's m very likely that you can hit the breakpoint in other processes. Thank you for watching.